Kaczynski, you son of a bitch, you did it again. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Anthony, here to give you guys another movie review. This time it is for A Quiet Place Part 2. Man, this guy did it again. I didn't think that was going to be possible for him to make a sequel that is better than the first one. Don't get me wrong, I still love the first A Quiet Place quite a bit. It's probably up there in my top films of all time. It just feels like a old school film, like a Spielberg film, like E.T. or Jurassic Park. And especially when you see it in the theaters, you just get those cinema feels. It's just, man, it feels so good to watch a movie in the movie theaters that gives me those feelings with some popcorn and my crunch of munch because I got to have both of them and just sit there and just like be on the edge of my seat the whole time. But let's get into this review proper and let's talk about A Quiet Place Part 2 and let's start with the pros. And where to begin with this film because I think top to bottom this film is good. I don't like calling movies a masterpiece because my motto is nothing's perfect. You know, this camera that I have isn't perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. So I don't think a movie can be a masterpiece or perfect, but it's damn near close. And the first thing that I want to highlight here is the score because the score is king in this film. Much like in the first film, the score is like another character. Without the score in A Quiet Place, I think that you wouldn't get the reaction that you do when you watch this movie because it's so much of an integral part in this film, especially in the second one of getting you hype, getting you on the edge of you see. I just loved it. I'm going to be downloading it on Spotify, so you know, that's gonna be on my playlist. Another thing that this movie does well is it shows that jump scares don't suck all the time at least. <laughs> I know there's this notion in the film communities that jump scares equal bad. And that's always confused me because most of the stuff that at least I grew up on, like the horror films and everything and the suspense movies, the thrillers, they had jump scares and nobody complained about them then. But now all of a sudden, now we got Twitter, you complain about a jump scare. But those jump scares are effective. I mean, you can argue that the first movie of The Quiet Place was full of jump scares. That's all there was in there. Nobody was complaining about that. This one's the same thing, and they're effective. When they announced that they were making a second film of The Quiet Place, I was wondering what they were going to do, how they were going to expand the world of The Quiet Place. And they do that in this film. They are expanding the world. They're introducing us to new characters. The original cast is back, and they're better than ever. Emily Blunt is doing a standout performance. She is amazing in here. There's a couple of scenes that she just steals the show in here. But for me, the standout performance in here is from Cillian Murphy. He plays Emmett a man that's kind of lost and has lost it all. He's lost his wife, he's lost his family, and he kind of lost his trust in humankind. And he meets up with Emily Blunt and her family, and they form kind of a connection. And it's kind of his redemption story is this film. This film is basically Emmett's redemption story. He has to see if he still has that humanity in himself. And I thought that performance was powerful. It was great. You can you can get behind this character. And I feel like this is going to be the closest thing to The Last of Us, the movie that we're going to get. Or I guess it won't be the closest thing because they are having coming out with a TV series, an HBO Max TV series of The Last of Us. That's going to be cool. But this one is, this is The Last of Us, the movie. And... Man, it, I mean, to the creature design, I always thought that the creatures kind of remind me of like the little fungus people from The Last of Us. But the creature design itself has like a mixture of the aliens and like Predator and those things from The Last of Us. This is a really good creature design. And just the storytelling in this film is just so good. It's so crisp. It's so to the point. It's so kind of predictable a little bit. But the way that he does it, the way that Krasinski does it, it's just, it's just perfect. <laughs> like I always say with every film, there's going to be some cons and this movie is no exception. There is one thing that kind of irked me in this movie is it has to do with the lore between the aliens and the stuff that they've shown us in the first films are kind of retconned <laughs> in the second film. There's one thing in particular, one big thing that they reveal about the aliens in the second film that I could have sworn <laughs> they already talked about in the first film or showed at least and it they're just saying like no that that's not how it works in this film and that kind of caught me off guard and I don't think this is really a negative but I see a lot of people talking about this and it is that the ending is kind of abrupt 
and it's kind of comes out of nowhere. They did the same thing in the first film. I didn't mind it too much, but I can see why that would rub people the wrong way. Overall guys, I think A Quiet Place Part 2 is probably the best movie that I've seen in 2021. Yes, I said it. It is my favorite movie as of right now. I mean, the year isn't over yet. We're not even halfway there yet. But as of right now, has my number one spot of the best movie of 2021. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you think that the first film is better than this film? Or do you think this film is better than the first one? Let me know in the comments down below. Also guys, don't forget to check out my Twitter so you can stay up to date with my channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And remember guys, keep watching movies.